Hello and welcome to the Travel Troll and Mazzy. Travel Hi. Trollette. Troll. Trollette. Tr well, I don't know what we're going to call you. We'll come up with something. Hello! Right, today where have we brought them? Oh, I forget what it's called. It's called Bingham Priory. Oh, Priory. Yeah. Binham Priory. Binham, yeah. Um, I put it on my map as Bingham Priory and it's Binham Priory. So we couldn't find it. We've found it and I'm glad we have because it's full of some really exciting stories. Let me tell you all about them. Maybe Mazzy will. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Let me tell you all about them. So, the Abbey was built in... How old do you reckon it is? Um, 14 something. Nearly. Um, 1091, I think it was oh, okay. built. 1091, that's just after the Battle of Hastings, which was 1066. Now, I don't know if you know who built this, but it, it was a, a guy called Peter, and he was the nephew of William the Conqueror. William the Conqueror's nephew built this priory. That's cool. That's cool. That's real cool. So it's quite a big priory. How many monks do you reckon lived here? It's a Benedictine priory, by the way. 1,300? 1,300 monks. No. Um, started out with six. Right, OK. Then it went up to 13 monks. And yeah. Sorry, I'm getting it wrong. Started out with eight, went up to 14 monks in the 14th century, and then down to six people. Six people in this huge, huge. priory. They were spoilt. They yeah. were spoilt. Now, there was an abbot, an abbot at St Albans Priory, and he wanted this priory, he liked this priory. So, what he did is he faked some documents saying that only he could decide who was going to be the abbot at this priory. So he came along, kicked out the old abbot of this priory and took it over himself and he starved all the monks in here saying, you know, trying to get them all to leave. Starving them he was. Oh. Horrible man, and he were an abbot. <laughs> King John found out about this, the King of England, found out about this and he turned around to this abbot and he, uh, he got a load of men together and he came here with loads of men to take it back off him. He was furious. He's coming over the hill. Not that there's any hills in Norfolk. It, it was coming across the grass, let's just say. And this abbot saw him coming and he thought, well, I'm not going to fight against them lot, bye-bye. Ran away, no one ever saw him again. Wimp. Just a pure wimp. So in the mid-1200s, there was more drama. It was uh, Alexander de Langley. Now, you won't have heard of him, but he was the... Oh, he was the former prior at Wymondham, sorry, Wyndham Abbey, where we took you before. Um, if you don't remember it, check out the video. We've already made that video. He was from there, and for some reason he, he went insane, and he was brought here and he was kept in chains here, in the dungeons, until he died. And he's actually buried in the churchyard here, apparently. I'm doubting there's still going to be a... You're not going to be able to see his grave. We'll have a look for it. If we can find it, we'll show you it, but we won't find it, so you won't see it. A bit later on here, some guy called Edward, Edward Parson, I think he was called, he tried to build a house here, like a manor house, and the workmen came over and they started building it, and some masonry fell down and it hit one of the workmen on the head. So they all ran away and refused to come back. They said that it, was a, it had a bad omen, did the place. It's got a bad vibe about it. So the house never got finished. I don't even know where it is. I don't think it's that one. That looks a bit too modern. Now you might think all monks are really good people and they're very religious. They weren't. Not all monks were even religious. Can you believe that? It's true. We've got a jet coming over, sorry. But there was one called William de Summerton. He were a real bad one back in about 1250. And he used to steal from the priory. He was an alchemist, which is like chemistry. And a lot of people used to say it were like wizards and witches who did that kind of stuff. And he, he basically said, all his life, all he wanted to do is make gold out of any other metal. So get a piece of iron and turn it into gold. And he'd do loads of experiments to try and make this happen. Uh, and to do that, he used to have to spend a lot of money on equipment. Um, and he used to steal chalices, gold rings, silver cups and spoons from in the priory. He were a thief, a thief monk. 
So a few minutes ago I told you about Alexander de Langley. I've read something else now from a different website and it tells more of a story about him. He came here and he was studying all monk stuff. And he went mad. He was reading so much every day. He was reading, 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 like I do. Like, And he went mad. I might go mad one day, you know. He was just reading, reading, and he went mad. And instead of helping him, the other monks, they didn't help him, no. They put him in chains and put him in cellar and just left him there until he died. So that's a bit more on Mr. De Langley. Now in this area, there's an underground tunnel. And this is where we're getting onto ghosts now. Apparently, you can see this monk guy walking around. It's, it's De Langley, the one who were in chains, who, who went do lally. Apparently, he's, he's been seen going around this tunnel over the years um, as a madman. Now, we don't know where the tunnel is anymore, I don't think. We can't see any signs for it. You can't see it going down, but there's loads of ghost stories. That's the first. De Langley haunts this place. So the ghost of this monk going in this tunnel, it was going around for centuries and people were scared to come to the priory. Anyway, one day this fiddler came along. He had a fiddle and a dog. A fiddle's like a, a violin, you can do that kind of thing. A fiddle and a dog. And he came up, he says, I'll sort it out. I'll find out if there is a ghost in your tunnel. He says, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the tunnel. He was very clever. He says, I'm gonna play the fiddle. He had a big crowd. They, were all, they all came to watch him. They wanted rid of this monk ghost. They were scared of him. I'm gonna play my fiddle and you can, if the fiddling stops, you know there's a problem. So he's go, he goes in the tunnel, fiddling away with his dog. His dog's right next to him. Well, just behind him there. Fiddling away like this. And all the crowd, you can follow me around, you can move it, you know. <laughs> it moves. <laughs> and all the crowd are above ground following him. So he's fiddling up to here. The crowd's above his head there. And he's fiddling away, fiddling away. And it just keeps going until the fiddling stops. Now the crowds were too scared to go in the tunnel to find out what had happened to this fiddler. So they just stood at the entrance, chilling out like this. Getting cold, because it were a cold day. Just stood there waiting, hundreds of them. Not one of them had go in to see if he were all right. Anyway, a few hours later, out comes his dog. His dog comes out and it's shivering like this. You know, with fright, it's really scared is this dog. Something happened in there, nobody knows what it was. So the fiddler never came back out. And that night there was a really big storm, you know, with like lightning and them forky things all coming out of the sky. And they hit the entrance to the tunnel and it all caved in. And the dog was never seen again. The fiddler was never seen again. And nobody ever dared to open that tunnel up again. They just left it. So that was the end of that story until 1933. You know what happened? In 1933, they were building a road. Now, it's known as Fiddler's Hill. There ain't any hills. It must be a very small hill somewhere around here called Fiddler's Hill. There's actually an Iron Age uh, settlement there, uh, some kind of house, roundhouse or something, and it's under there where he went missing. Now, in, 19, in 1933, they were building a road, and as they were excavating, you know what they found? Well, they didn't so much oh, find a tunnel. A violin? <laughs> they they didn't, no, they didn't find a violin. They found three skeletons, mm. and one of them was a skeleton of a dog. So is, <laughs> the, is it a true story? It sounds like it might be a true story. If it is, that is amazing, isn't it? That's really, really cool. So whilst we were at Bingham... Bingham Priory, I just wanted to bring you here and show you the Market Cross, the Binham Cross. Um, because there used to be 20,000 of these from the 16th century, and between the 12th and 16th century, there were 20,000 of these all over England, and there's only 2,000 remain now. This is the Binham Cross. It's not got a cross on top of it anymore. You've literally just got a big stick of stone. That's all there is. But I like the story behind this one because it was Henry I back in the 1300s. Uh, it granted Binham the right to hold a fair and a market here every year. And they've done so. 
all the way up until recently, it was actually, I think it was the 1950s, 800 years they had a fair right here. Can you imagine being able to metal detect this lawn? It's called the village lawn. I would love to metal detect that lawn. You'll never know what you're going to find. Um, but yeah, just passing through, just wanted to throw that in. So yeah, that's all I've got to say about this abbey. What do you think about the abbey? Really it's cold. Good. It's really it's cold. cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cold. It's good. It's got some interesting history. I like the fact that it was William the Conqueror's nephew who, who built this. Yeah. That's really good history. Yeah. I like the fiddler story. I like the grounds. They're pretty good. There's actually a church over there you can go in. It's still they still use the church. They built that in the middle of of the priory later on. And that's still used for worship today, but we're not going in it. We've had enough of church. Well, we haven't had enough of churches. You've had enough of churches. <laughs> we are still going to be showing you lots of churches, but we're trying to dwindle them down in Norfolk anyway. But there is still going to be some. So why, not why Mondham Abbey, uh, Bin, Binham, Binham Abbey. What do you think? How many out of ten would you give it? I think eight. Eight? Yeah. Eight out of ten, says yeah. Mazzy. Unfortunately, Mazzy isn't the travel <laughs> travel troll. I am, and I'm giving it a six. It's it's, it's all right, but it's like just the walls. Ghost, it's the ghost stories. The though. ghost stories yeah. are pretty cool. The monk and the fiddler and the dead dog it's, skeleton yeah. thing. And it's the way you tell them as well. So. The way I tell them? Yeah, the stories, so it makes it better. It's not a story, it's, I'm documenting it. Yeah, I know. I'm not telling a story, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> the way I tell Aye, it. Aye, aye. Okay, we're giving it a six. <laughs> See you at the next. Say goodbye, Mazzy. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Many thanks for watching guys, please don't forget to click like, subscribe, leave a comment and share the video. And be sure to check out my other channel Deep Digger Dan and my website thetraveltroll.uk. You can also follow me on Facebook, on Twitter and on Instagram. But most importantly please do donate to the charity which we're supporting in this county. All links to everything I've just mentioned are all in the description below. Please come back tomorrow as we continue our adventure to try and make the biggest video library of the sites of the UK. Goodbye!